Hello and welcome to the show. We start today with the Jeep Grand Cherokee. There are a number of different versions of this. I have opted for the smallest one. Yes, this is the smallest this vehicle gets. This is the lowest ride height that this vehicle gets. Still pretty damn high uh, and also not the best handling of vehicles. Turned into the first corner, uh, hit a tree so hard it momentarily killed the frame rate and I, I broke it. Quite, a, quite, a, quite solidly broke it. In fact, the drive line is gone and we can't move out of this ditch. Uh, I went for the, the lowest version in the hope to have the best handling possible. Um, it turns out it is still not the easiest of vehicles to drive. It has a lot more oversteer, an awful lot more oversteer than I was expecting from a four-wheel drive car. We come out of the corners and the back end is just determined to step out and this time it kind of put me in a bush and then slightly on my side and... I, I may have broken it. I mean, it still drives, it's just kind of caught uh, on its side. Now, even with this being the lowest version of the vehicle, it still does have rather a lot of ride height, which is good for dealing with bumps, uh, bad for falling over. Uh, as we see, I slightly clipped the inside of, uh, there's a mound on the left-hand side that uh, is a little bit of a pain, and that was enough to put me over. I'm going to do exactly the same thing again next time. Almost saved it. Very nearly got away with saving it, but uh, now we've got it stuck on its side again. The downside, as we saw in the first episode of this when we had the pickup truck, the, the high ride height is good for some aspects, but on some of these bumps it does cause an awful lot of problems. I made it around the jump, I made it to the next corner where the vehicle started to go on its side. I attempted to correct it, which uh, I stopped it from rolling. I did end up putting it off a cliff though, and ooh, still we tumble, still we're tumbling. It has taken a fair old whack as it fell down this mountain. Amazingly, I managed to stop it before it fell any further. We're going to have one final roll, and it still works. <laughs> it fell down. So the, the first the first corner on the first attempt, I clipped the back of it on a tree, and that destroyed everything. I fell down sort of twice off the road down the edge of the mountain, and the only real damage aside from sort of visual is I think I twisted something somewhere. I'm not entirely sure what I twisted, whether it was the chassis or whether it was an axle somewhere, um, because yeah, the wheels like to lift up, it likes to be a tripod uh, from now and then. I was trying to have a look around, I can't really see what it is that I've bent, um, other than the <laughs> fairly noticeable bodywork damage. But uh, it finished, technically, uh, after missing out half of the course. The handling was still catching me out with the... Uh, <laughs> sudden oversteer and a very slow speed roll. Uh, that, that was one of the least spectacular. I mean, I've rolled many a vehicle in these videos. That was certainly the least uh, spectacular of all of them. The Mound of Doom was back to uh, cause havoc and sure enough, there goes the Jeep into a tree and <laughs> we fall down another side and we're going to end up... This, this Jeep spent a lot of time upside down. Uh, <laughs> which is... I, I'm not massively surprised I knew this would likely struggle with the really high ride height. This attempt I was worried about rolling, tipping the vehicle over, got away with it and was so excited I then promptly lost control. Uh, just before the finish line as well, rather annoyingly, that one. Yeah, I tried to put power down, we just got a big slide and then I couldn't quite save it in time. Despite being a good off-road vehicle, this one is, deals with the bumps very, very well. Occasionally I can still get things wrong, this time managed to take out one of the front tyres, and off we go again with the wheels manically spinning. Uh, I mean, we've kind of, sort of, crossed the finish. And, no, that might not have quite worked, <laughs> as I had intended. As I was getting a little bit better with the vehicle, uh, then came the bigger problem of rolling the minute you touch the apex of a corner. Uh, yeah, again, another very, very slow speed roll for the Cherokee. It did not take much to roll this vehicle. Uh, again, I'm not particularly surprised by that. Made the jump much better. Uh, just couldn't stop. Please stop. Please stop. Perhaps turn. No, we've got... We've just got... <laughs> all of the understeer and then we're going to make it to the finish area uh, yet again but rather brokenly yeah brakes were not the brakes weren't amazing on here they are better than some it was just this is not a vehicle designed for taking really tight turns i managed to <laughs> I somehow got away with stopping it rolling uh, promptly fell off a mountain and then it still ended up on its side. I think there's some irony in there somewhere. Um, yeah, not the easiest vehicle to drive this one. Don't get me wrong, this is an excellent vehicle when it comes to off-road, and I proved that in the uh, Aeroplane Dead Island adventure. It survived everything I could throw at it, but when it comes to a rally stage such as this, it's not the, not the vehicle of choice, really. It is somewhat heavy 
Uh, it's not the most responsive. It's real pain getting it turned into some of these corners. You do have to be quite slow. Uh, or a lot slower than I have been with other vehicles trying to get it turned in. You've got to be very patient on the throttle as well. If you're a little bit too eager uh, to put your foot down, you're going to have a big slide and then it's not very controllable once it starts sliding. I wouldn't recommend this as a drift car. Uh, <laughs> it would be pretty damn terrible. Um, however, it does deal with the bumps pretty damn well. These jumps were causing no problems for it. had to be a little bit careful on the left there. You can just see it as I flash past the uh, the, the little mound that will cause a problem for this. That, that tabletop jump is actually a little bit more, more problematic than I had at first anticipated. Again, there's a couple of these corners. That one was one of them that has a very, very bumpy braking zone that really wasn't a problem for the Jeep. And again, this second jump, not a problem, uh, provided I could get it slowed down enough for this next corner. Even on this attempt, I did run a little bit wide. It was just wouldn't stop in time. It's such a steep braking zone. This is the next corner. It has a very bumpy braking zone. No problem for the Jeep. Some of the pickup trucks uh, have had problems there, trying to slow down. Some of the vehicles have had problems there, trying to slow down. Not for this one. It deals with the bumps very well, but it's not really a, not really a rally vehicle, if you like. Uh, so yeah, it does struggle a bit on the handling. However, it made it to the bottom of the course, and on this time, I, I think it's the first vehicle to have made it there completely damage-free. There is no sign of, uh, of any damage on the Jeep at all, which is well, it's the first. It's the it's the first one to make it uh, without any damage. Up next, we have the world's worst handbrake. The <laughs> The covert handbrake is useless. It just doesn't stop the vehicle rolling down this uh, fairly small hill, which actually poses a bit of a problem for me trying to set off because I want the vehicles, of course, to be stationary. So there is, is an even playing field. I don't want one vehicle to have a rolling start. So yeah, this one was a bit of a pain trying to get it stationary to set off. So I did my best with it. There is only so much I can I can really do with this one. The covert I expected to be pretty damn quick. Through here. I'm using the fastest version of this car that comes with the standard game. So this is the unmodded version of the cover. You get this in the game uh, without installing any of the mods. And uh, this is the, the fastest version. And yeah, I was expecting this car to be pretty fast down here. It is a very, very good handling car. One of the most fun cars there is to drive in the game. Uh, I may possibly have understeered a tiny bit wide and clipped a tree. And that, that broke the everything. The, the everything is completely and utterly the engine is not even making any noise it's pretty rare that you kill a car so well on here that the engine stops making all noise um but i managed to do that from slightly touching a tree uh, <laughs> trees are evil in this game apparently the jumps were always likely to be a problem for the comet and although i got absolutely everything wrong somehow i managed to stop it for that corner i'm not sure i've lost the front bumper but that's fine uh the, the bumps in the next braking zone that's what sort of screwed me over again i actually landed on my wheels but the everything was broken once more and there was no noise coming from the car <laughs> twice in a row i have killed it so severely there is nothing left uh, the front wheel was also pointing at a silly angle yeah the cover is a little bit more fragile as you would expect really uh, the bumps were or the large jumps i should say were the biggest problem for this road car again <laughs> It's not the tabletop jump that's causing the problem for them. It's the sort of the hidden bump just in the shadows afterwards that uh, are causing issues. And this time the engine is still working. The, the wheels were still spinning, but uh, the car was beached on a rock. The second jump was causing all sorts of problems. This time I couldn't quite get away with it. Clipped the, clipped the tree with the back end. And while the car would still move, the back, the back wheel was all bent into funny shapes. So yeah, that wasn't the most successful time. However, it did not take very long. In fact, I very nearly completed this on the first attempt with the cover. This is a very, very good car for driving down this course. Deals with the bumps okay. I mean, it's, it's a road vehicle. It does get thrown about a little bit, but it's not absolutely terrible. Um, and it is a very, very good handling car. Yes, it is front-wheel drive, but you can chuck it around at no end. The short wheelbase helps with all of that. Um, it's a lovely, lovely vehicle to drive this one. I've said many times this is one of the best handling cars in the game. This and the Sleeker are awesome fun to throw around at some of these courses. You have got to be careful with some of the bumpy braking zones, <laughs> such as that. The Cherokee, you wouldn't have even noticed there was a bump there, but in this you get thrown around. For the first jump, you kind of want to stick to the left for the first part of it, and then you want to swing to the right, is what I'm finding, uh, to get around there without having vehicles thrown uh, into the general scenery. These next few corners, provided you can get it stopped uh, and not panic when it starts doing that kind of thing, they're really not too much of a challenge. I'm not really afraid of rolling this on the inside of the corners, because it just doesn't have the right height. 
right. Uh, I got over the jump remarkably cleanly that time as we come to the very, very steeply banked corner. Uh, yeah, there's none of the handling issues we saw with the Cherokee. This thing gets turned into the corners. Lovely. And you can put your foot down and there's no worry of oversteer uh, as there was with the Jeep because this thing is front wheel drive. And it is across the line and parked in the garage. Yeah, the Covet made it down there. The easiest of any vehicle I've had to drive down there, really. Very, very good car, this one. And it also, amazingly, made it down there without any real visual damage. I think the front bumper might be slightly, slightly wrong. I was surprised, actually, how well it survived that second jump. The only thing that I, I think is a little bit hard to tell, but I'm pretty sure I've collapsed the rear suspension. Just looking at that, it has it is rather low at the back where it shouldn't be. But aside from that, it survived remarkably well. The little road car has made it to the bottom of the course with quite a lot less damage than I thought it might do. We move on to our our third and final vehicle. This is the D-Bird. It is a three-wheeled variant of the game's pickup truck. Uh, you can kind of see where this is going. Uh, <laughs> With this thing. This has the best handbrake. One thing I will say, this has the best handbrake of any vehicle I've tested on this series. However, it doesn't really do turning very well. I mean, it's sort of like a vague suggestion of turning. That we might kind of turn right and then we'll go... <laughs> it's just the most ridiculous thing. This, it, it doesn't steer. Um, even when it's not on its side, it, it doesn't have very much turning. It could also do with a welded diff, because you turn a corner and then the wheel in the air just sits and spins and then nothing happens. Uh, we're trying to turn. We're trying, we're trying to turn. Please steer. Steer, that's not gone to plan. We may have thrown it off a cliff a little bit. Um, <laughs> it was still working. I mean, it's twisted to hell, but uh, it was still working. This is a terribly hard vehicle to drive. It just does not turn. There is very, very little. I mean, this, <laughs> this is not what this vehicle was designed for. This was designed for messing about, not to be thrown down a mountain as fast as possible. Somehow I got it. I'm still not entirely sure how that corner there works. I was amazed to have got around it and then promptly lost control and hit a tree. Um, Occasionally going up on its side actually helps it turn. Sometimes it's better to throw the vehicle on its side and then kind of let it dig in and turn because when all three wheels are on the ground, it doesn't have steering <laughs> near enough. It gets bounced around uh, on the landing zone from that jump, and I could couldn't stop it in time. And off we go. Damage is pretty damn <laughs> pretty damn cool on this one. Uh, yeah, there are a few attempts. Pretty much the same thing happened with every fail I did with this vehicle. Is that I went round a corner or didn't go around the corner, more like I just couldn't turn. The first corner wasn't actually that much of a challenge. Um, after the first episode, I've not had too many problems with that first corner. The Mound of Doom is also not a problem with this vehicle because it's like that. Uh, you, I don't even think you could hit the Mound of Doom if you tried, and it certainly wouldn't do anything if you did. Uh, I could be a little bit more risky on some of these hills. I think this vehicle, I'm not entirely sure how this mod was made, but uh, this is a damn hard car to roll. Like It'll go up on its side, but there's something that stops it from rolling over, so it doesn't like, roll over constantly. Um, so I wasn't really that worried about clipping the inside of these corners and rolling the vehicle because, as you can see, it does far worse on its own anyway. Um, yeah, it was. it's just you had to be so slow to get it through a corner. Like, even on this one here, it's starting to sort of run a little bit wide, and that was me being unbelievably slow. The jumps and the bumps just weren't a problem. You were never going fast enough with this car for it to ever be an issue. Uh, again, I'm not worried about rolling here because it's going around the corner on its side as it is, uh, regardless of the um, of the banking. The bouncing around was a little bit of a concern. Again, I wasn't actually going fast enough for it to really uh, throw up a problem. It was more of um, the car, the back of the car bouncing when it was coming off one of the jumps. You saw it before, it just, it does not like, uh, <laughs> I don't know what it is, it doesn't like the, the back of the vehicle landing the ground, it wants to keep pinging it up in the air, a little bit slow around the corners, but there is just nothing I can do uh, <laughs> about it. As we around the final corner, we're running wide, we're trying to get it stopped, we're turning, and then it is on to the finishing stretch. Yeah, this was a thing. This was a thing to drive as we plow into the building slightly. Um, not an easy vehicle to drive down here. Not at all. It does not have the steering for some of the incredibly tight turns. But it made it across the line after a while. Uh, yeah, certainly not the fastest of vehicles. And it hasn't made it damage-free. That's 
pretty much from rubbing uh, along the floor whenever you go around a corner. Slightly bent the front bumper up. But uh, yeah, it has made it, which is the important thing, really. Anyway, we move on to the times. And the Covet sets an impressive time to go second. Goes faster than the Celica and the normal D-Series with a 117 Point eight. Uh, I'm not massively surprised, um, but it is still a very, very good time. A lovely car to drive. So yeah, that's a, that's a pretty, pretty damn quick time from it. The Jeep Cherokee was just a bit too hard to steer through the corners. Dealt with the bumps very well, but it was a little bit of a tank through the corners. So it goes into eighth with a 124.5. Not that far off though. Uh, from the supercar and the D-Bird goes well last with a 148.4 yeah that is a tough car to drive that is ridiculous uh, to drive I recommend you give it a download though just for silliness fun uh, <laughs> yeah it really is quite a silly vehicle as ever with uh, any BeamNG video I do the links to the mods will be in the description so you can go find them yourself and you can download them have a go uh, with the vehicles that you can have a go with this course as well. I highly recommend it. It's great fun. Uh, anyway, that is it for today. So thank you very much for watching. And until next time, goodbye.